Hey. Stand still. Stand still? Stand still. I haven't moved. Oh, it's a mess in here. We're gonna have to get cracking with the knacking light pet. I hate doing any job twice. This can be three times. Shut up, you. So, uh, yeah. This cable in, which we're bringing down here from yonder woods, uh, really wants to be plumbed in pretty much exactly where that hose pipe is. So, what I think I'm going to have to do is disconnect this water pipe, send it over yonder, move the sink, exchange it with this smaller unit so we can put a control panel here. I think that's what I want to do. I'll leave the hose pipe where it is because it's conveniently over the drain so if we have any drippage just run straight in the drain. Then we can have the control panel on the wall here, on the weeping wall. Might not seem a great idea considering the wall gets wet, but if I mount it on some plywood or something, then that'll be good. It's not going to be a control panel off the hoop, off the hook, off the bat, off the rail, what's the word? Right away. Off your rocker. Off your rocker. Uh, initially I'm going to manually operate everything because I just can't afford to buy a control panel. So uh, we're just going to whack in some big chunk big isolator switches and uh, use them to control the elements but what we do need is somewhere for these cables to terminate into these types of boxes this is what I'm talking about essentially see if we can salvage what we've got 16 amps should be big enough to carry a 9 watt kilowatt element as well so we should be good we should uh, be good with that so bring this cable down here all we have to move then is the sink unit and I've made it extendable, so I don't even have to worry about putting a new piece of pipe in. Why can we not just sit the control panel there? Well, the control panel... Where the cabinet is. Where the cabinet is. Because that's a dry wall. It is a dry wall. And then you can just run the cables coming down this way. It's but then the, to... the cable's got to run all the way across here, underneath the sink, underneath the thing. Does it have to go underneath? Well, I've got to plug kettle in. We can't trail it along the floor, can we? It's got a, the power cable's got to go there. I mean, the best place for it would be smack bang next to it, then it's a short cable run. So I might move that hose pipe after all. We'll see. Anyway, cut. Of deceit. The nursing and midwifery council. Whiffery. Criticised for its response to the deaths of eleven babies and a mother. We interrupt this electrical installation video for a brief infomercial. Never had these before. Roots. The Hunt Pack story. Who are they manufactured by? Hunt Pack. Produce Limited. So check this out. They're crisps, but made out of vegetables. Beetroot. Yeah, <laughs> beetroot. Parsnip. The parsnip is awesome. What else was in there? Carrot. Oh, carrot, beetroot and parsnip then. With a pinch of sea salt. I particularly like the parsnip. Mmm. Really good. Anyway, crack on lad.
Today's top tip, how to strip armoured cable. Well, what you're going to have to do is mark where you want the cables to come out, not where you, and where you want the armour to end, and go all the way around with a hacksaw, but not cutting through the armour. You've just got to score it all the way around. Like so. Looks easy, doesn't it? Because it is. So you can see that the plastic sheathing's coming away. And I haven't cut through the armour. So I'll just pull that plastic off. Come on, Bobby. There we go. And then all of these bits of armor will just flake away. All the steel wire. And it backwards on the score marks that you made from the chisel. It'll just disappear. Look how neat that is. Hey, So neat. And then the next thing we're gonna do is just Jump back another inch on the plastic. In fact, I'll strip this first. We'll get into the actual power cables first by removing the internal PVC sheathing or whatever it is, rubber. You might have rubber. We'll pull that off. There we go. So we've got the new colours on this one. The last one I did had the uh, old three face colours red, yellow blue etc and then we're going to just come back an inch on the plastic sheathing cut the plastic again down to the wire pull that off and then in a clockwise direction we'll spread out the sheath the armour check it check it out so now all I need to do is find the socket to go in here, this bit, and it is as simple as that, just clamping this down. All right, we've got the nut to go in the hole, which also comes with a little earthing tag, which we're gonna have to get in there also. So we'll pop that to the front for now. This is gonna be a real pain in the arse to get all together. A real pain in the arse because uh, it's got this in there. I wonder if I can take this out for a moment. Looks like I can. Let's just take this out while we install this section. Oh, beautiful. Just what the doctor ordered. There we go. So, don't forget to put your condom on. No glove, no love. Slide that up on the, on the sheath. Oh yeah. There we go. And then you've got to put your nut on. Always condom before your nut. And then finally, we have to spread out all these little pieces of steel wire. Lovely. There we go, solid as a rock. managed to wire up all of the 
uh, connectors in the main control panel. So we've got boil, boil, HLT. I just need to figure out which one is which when I get over there. And I'm also just going to do a quick earth test. Just in case uh, you don't know what one of them is. I'll show you how we can do it over there. So the quickest and easiest way to test for earth on all of this three phase system is whack one peg on the multimeter into the earth port and then basically jibe it into the earth port shouldn't have to be on actually in all of the outlets and we have a freaking earth connection so we've got a considerable amount of work done today I'm quite chuffed froggy nipped in nipped up to the pub and had a quick pint with him uh, I also the battery's flashing at me so I'm gonna wrap this up quick I also managed to get some pipe work for the glycol I reckon a couple of pipes in for the glycol on the back of the tanks so we'll do some more work on that tomorrow but until then folks I'm gonna wrap it up the time is cracking on is it gone seven Gem? it's gone seven right then look how orange she is she's been tangoed we'll see you tomorrow mm -hmm.